Okay, so this is uh, the kind of job I really like doing. This is a um, this is a Fender valve amp, very small Fender valve amp based on a Fender Champ. This is called a Fender Champion. Um, it had, I found out, it had a blown uh, 6v6 valve. That one's blown, and also when I think when it blew, it also blew this little resistor. You can see the damage there. Um, so I've had to, what I've done is widen a temporary, um, this is just to uh, kind of see if I can get it going fix. So completely inappropriate size resistor, but it's about the, well, I thought it, I think it's the correct <laughs> uh, value, but we're going to test it. That's, that's what I'm going to do now. So I'm going to turn it on, run a few checks. I'm going to try and calculate what's called the plate dissipation, which is basically how, how hot the valve is running. This is a, this is a very, very dangerous thing to be doing. So you've got to know what what you're doing because you're you're dealing with extremely high DC voltages. Um, so you have to be discharging these capacitors, which could probably injure you very badly or kill you, even if the amp is turned off. So uh, don't do this unless you really well don't do it. <laughs> I've been doing this for quite a number of years. Um, so yeah, I'm going to come back with the values and then I'm going to see if see if it's actually working once I've done that. So I'll put this on pause for a minute. Okay, so here are my um, GCSE physics type calculations. Um, these are the measurements I took. So the resistance across the cathode was uh, 468 ohms. The voltage across it was 24 volts. So um, you can use Ohm's law, voltage divided by resistance, to calculate the current that's going through it. And it was quite high. It was uh, about 51 milliamps. Um, so then you do the plate voltage, which is the very, very high one. That's the really dangerous one to measure. Um, and you can calculate the power that's um, the, what's the plate dissipation, which is the value you need. Um, by multiplying the current by the, the voltage and the plates are running at nine, about 19 watts which is actually pretty hot so these these valves are running a little bit too hot it should be more like for this type of valve um, a warm a warm bias would be about 12 to 14 watts these are kind of special um, Special tubes I've got, they're designed to run slightly hotter, but this is this is kind of way too hot, really. Um, so they won't last for very long. What I'm going to do next is just going to just see if it's working. I'm not going to play it for very long because I don't want to damage the valve, but I'm just going to check to see whether what I've done is actually going to... Um, whether there's anything else I need to do, or whether I'm actually going to get a sound now. So next thing's a little test. So I've got my guitar plugged in. Um, plugs it into the amp. This is the moment of truth. Gosh, here we go. It's on. Um. Ooh. Cool. We have got sound. That's good. Bit of a scratchy port there. I'll probably spray that. But it is actually working again, which is good. So I'm going to turn it off because I don't want to burn the tubes out. Um, so the next thing for me to do is to try and work out what what um, is a good value to put in here, so that I'm not um, um, so that the tube is running a, a kind of a warm temperature rather than sort of too hot. You want to get a kind of nice balance. It doesn't want to run under too cold because you get distortion. You don't want it running too hot because then the, uh, the tube won't last very long. So that's the next exciting bit of maths for me to do. And then I'll order the part, put it in, buy a new valve, and then hopefully it all should be up and running and I can give it back to the customer. Cool.